Hey, hey, Gemini, Intuitive Soul Coach here with your September 2024 bonus reading. Welcome back to my channel if you're returning and welcome if you're new. If you're interested in a personal reading, signing up for the monthly newsletter, or entering into the free reading giveaway, you can find all of that information in the description box below the video. All right, welcome. Now, Gemini, we'll take a look at what is being illuminated on your path, partially due to the upcoming eclipse season that we have in September and October. Now, eclipse energy can be very transformative. It can bring enlightenment. It can bring things that may have been shadowed or we didn't have access or knowledge to them. It can bring a sense of awareness that leads to great personal transformation and metamorphosis. So we'll see what is being illuminated on your path as well as what this new chapter entails, this new beginning, what initiative you can take to move forward on this path. We'll look at your values, any blocks that could be hindering your success, and then we'll connect to an outcome. So before we flip over your cards, I kept seeing multiple major arcanas, the same ones multiple times in your shuffle as I shuffle all the decks prior to you know each reading. And I kept seeing the lovers. I was seeing the devil energy and the sun. So the message that's coming to mind here for you is you may be letting go of something you were heavily attached to. Now, this could be a belief. It could be a relationship. It could be some sort of experience that you've gone through. There was a deep attachment to it. And I feel like there's a now a profound release where you feel liberated and you're opening yourself up to more happiness with that sun energy and you're opening your heart with the lovers. And this could be important partnerships. This could be soulmate connections coming in. So bottom of the deck, we actually have the death card. And this is the energy of transformation and metamorphosis. So when the death card shows up, this is about you know, you going through a change. It's the phoenix rising. Something that may have been out of your control has ended or has, you know, occurred in your life. But what you do with that new beginning is on you. So even though circumstances may have been out of your control when it comes to some sort of an ending, I feel like the rising piece of it is on you. Like, how do you want to rise? And that's why the death is represented by the Wicked Witch of the West. Because, you know, when that house landed on her sister, the Wicked Witch of the East, right? It's like there was a part of her that rose from the ashes. And I feel like you yourself... You've gone through it. You've gone through a lot is what I'm picking up on. Some of you, there may have been a major ending that had occurred in your world. I'm actually getting the last possibly six to eight months or six to eight months ago. Something may have ended, but you're still feeling the residual effects of this as well. Or it could have even been over a year ago because I'm getting Scorpio. It could be Scorpio season with the death energy. Uh, and I feel like you are ready for a new path, but there's something that is lingered. Okay, so what is being illuminated for you? We do have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles showing up here. We have the Wheel of Fortune, the Page of Swords. We have the Five of Wands. We have the Three of Wands. And we have the Three of Cups. Okay. Big major arcana, wheel of fortune. This is a major turning point in your life. So what is being illuminated here is dynamics that are one-sided, okay? When the six of pentacles shows up representing the white king's plum cake, it almost feels like there's a move to make here with this six. Sixes represent problem solving. They also represent loyalty and responsibility. And I feel like you've had a responsibility of maybe taking care of the household or the family or in your job. There's something here that you felt indebted to 
or you felt responsible for, and maybe that was part of that devil energy that I was picking up on. But the Six of Pentacles showing up being illuminated is where boundaries need to be established and perhaps where you've been over giving in your life or maybe not giving enough to. And if it is imbalanced or unequal, that is being illuminated. Whether it's a relationship that is one-sided, maybe you've been enabling, perhaps you've been giving too much or not giving enough. Maybe you've been in that you know, partnership in your career where you've been bending over backwards to put in time and energy and effort, but your boss may be taking advantage. I feel like one-sided energies are coming to a peak here for you to help you find and create boundaries within yourself. And that may upset people, right? It may upset them, especially if you say yes, you could be a people pleaser, Gemini, or you have a difficult time, you know, taking care of you because you, you don't want to disappoint others. And I also see here with this Six of Pentacles, this could even be an unexpected resource that shows up for you, an unexpected gift that helps you in the financial or material world. So whatever is being illuminated is actually going to help you financially or in this material plane because the Wheel of Fortune can be a fortune, right? But this is also maybe a gift or a donation. This could be some form of grant, scholarship. It could be a loan. It could be, you know, help. This is helping others or you yourself being helped. So be open to this. And maybe for some of you, there's a sense of pride, right? Pride, I'm not going to ask for help or, you know, I've been doing it all on my own. So therefore I'm going to keep doing it. It almost feels like, you're being guided to be open to reciprocity, right? Instead of it being imbalanced in some way, shape, or form, it's I scratch your back, you scratch mine. We help each other. You know, you've helped so many people. Let the universe help you in some way, shape, or form. So whatever is being illuminated is actually quite good here. And it's going to help you make some big moves, possibly in your career or in your love life with the lovers. It could be, you know, regarding your health as well, because you see that the White King's Plum Cake also has to do with, you know, white is the color of innocence. It's the color of purity and a clean slate. And we have the chess game at the bottom. So it almost feels like you're able to make a move due to some sort of unexpected help or gift that shows up for you in the near future. Now, what is the next chapter or this new beginning that is actually going to bring about change or metamorphosis? I feel like with the Wheel of Fortune, I feel like this gift or this illumination is, is actually going to help you out in some way, shape, or form. It's almost as if someone or something comes out of the woodwork and... It could even be a guide that you have or spiritual guidance, spiritual support that says, Gemini, enough is enough. You've been bending over backwards. If they're not seeing your worth, here's a brand new opportunity for you to go in this direction. And it's up to you to, to listen, right? To listen and not, not allow yourself to feel disconnected any longer. And you have the Wheel of Fortune, which is the white rabbit. You know, in Alice in the Wonderland, when that white rabbit is hopping around with his clock saying, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Well, we know that divine timing is out of our control, right? It's out of our control. Timing is an illusion anyway. It's man-made and it gives us a false sense of control and stability in some way, shape or form. But the Wheel of Fortune is saying the time has come. The time has come for you to have this turning point or to take on a new journey or a new path or a new direction in your life. This is destiny and this is fate and you can't run from it. You can't time it. I feel like this is a major renewal of your life and this can also be karma, right? Letting go of that karmic never-ending cycle or, you know, some sort of fears that maybe kept you going round and round. This is a massive turning point when it comes to a new beginning in your life. 
and I feel like you're ready. I mean, card 10, 10 is, it breaks down to one, and ones are all about new beginnings and having the courage that you need to move towards this chapter. Now, how do you do that? What initiative can you take? Page of Swords is highlighted here by the griffin. So when this page shows up, pages are curious, right? They may not know everything. They may not know, you know, how they're getting there because they're not there yet, right? They're not at that king status in this situation, but it, it doesn't mean that they're not going to get there. What it means is it's important to be ready for anything new. Try to avoid overly compulsive or impulsive tendencies at this time, but do set your eye on the prize and go for it. Okay, so there's a, a fine line between impulsivity and assertiveness. And I want you to be assertive here, Gemini, and go after what you want, but use your logical mind as well. That is your gift. You are an air sign. And as I said that, 1111 was on the clock. So Page of Swords is all about, you know, searching for the truth. It's asking the difficult questions. It's coming up with new ideas. Some of you may even be recording, recording these ideas, writing them down in some way, shape, or form. This can be about a message coming in, downloads coming in that you're receiving that help inspire you in some way, shape, or form. And this page is also about not getting stuck in challenging energy or, you know, spying, gossiping, drama, things of that nature. And I'm also getting with this page of swords, embrace intellectual curiosity. Okay. Embrace what, where your mind is curious, embrace it. But if you go down the rabbit hole too far, you're not, it's going to be hard to find your way back. So be open again. This is where that fine line of balance and assertiveness and curiosity come in where again, if you go down the rabbit hole of the thoughts of the mind, because remember the thoughts in the mind can be used to build or it can be used to destroy. And I feel like the page of swords is saying you're heading towards, you know, a challenge, but this is a challenge that you can give a wink to, right? Look it in the eye, give it a wink, be assertive, be direct, and you you have what it takes to figure out what you need to along the way. You don't have to wait for all the pieces to be perfectly in tune before you take that next step. Gemini, what are your values? Now, we see here with the five of wands, they've changed, because five is the card of change. We see that you've had to play croquet with the queen. And what that means is there's been a little bit of uncertainty. There has been conflict. There has been obstacles. And because of, you know, the different rules, right? It's kind of like playing, playing a card game. Let's just throw out, I'm just going to, because we have the king and the queen, I'm going to say king's corner. It's a card game. Typically, when you play a card game, you have a specific set of rules, right? But depending on who you play that card game with, sometimes the rules change up a little bit. And you're like, wait a second, that's not how I was taught how to play the game, but what you may be realizing is those rules are the actual real rules or maybe that makes the game more fun or perhaps that's something that makes it a little more challenging and it makes the game, you know, more... <sighs> I don't want to say more fun, but more rewarding. That's what it is. So it's almost as if you've gone through some values that maybe you have questioned along the way. And that's where that page of swords comes in and says, you've been open-minded. You've been open-minded, but instead of just going along with how everyone else plays the game, now you're realizing what works because you've played a lot of them, right? You've been in a lot of scenarios or a lot of situations. You know what you're good at. You know the rules here. You know where to bend, right? You know reality versus illusion. And I just feel like you've gone through a lot of even competitiveness. 
it may feel at times like you're constantly competing, competing for your health or competing for that job, competing for a relationship. And I feel that your values hold true to your integrity. And what that means is you're not going to compromise or let someone come in and tell you how to play the game when you've been doing it for quite some time. But I feel like you're open to change. So that sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but it means that you want to work together. And even though someone may have a different viewpoint or a different perspective, you can honor it. You, but you have the opportunity to either bow out and say, nah, I'm going to sit this one out, you know, deal me in the next hand, or, you know, you can find a new community, a new tribe, a new relationship or a new job that does align with the new, you know, values that you have and that you hold for yourself. So this is quite powerful, Gemini. Now, what are some blocks that may be occurring? We have the three of wands. And we actually see Chess Valley. So we see now that Alice, you know, she's gone down the rabbit hole and she's come to that point where she's in the game. I mean, it's not below her anymore. She's in it. And it's almost as if you're one move away. You are one move away. But what blocks you at times is hesitation. I don't want to make a move because what if I make a move and it's not the right one, right? And that kind of goes back to the beliefs, what if everything that you've learned has put you in this perfect position for you to trust in your intuition or trust in your path, trust in this hand here that you've been dealt. And regardless of how this hand is played out, there's something here about fate. It reminds me of going and playing um, like 21. What is that game called? Um, or, or playing, let's say poker, right? Or you don't know necessarily what's going to come out if you're playing against the table or against the, you know, someone else. The only thing you can control is how you play your own cards. And it's up to destiny and fate of what comes out on the table. And I feel like regardless of what comes out, you're still in it. You still have to choose, you know, some sort of move here. So don't hesitate. And sometimes we do hesitate because of fear, right? What if it's not the card that matches with our energy? What if it's not what we want to see? What if it's, you know, what if it leaves us where we lose? But what if we win as well? Because there's going to be a lot of winning and losing. That's part of playing the game of life. And what I see here as well with this block that may show up from time to time with this three of wands is don't get lost in the planning. Right, Because when you get lost in the planning, you don't move. And it can feel overwhelming at times. So I see that, you know, stay open, stay curious with the Page of Swords. But if you've been planning something for, you know, five years, ten years, or if you've been waiting for the perfect time, it's time. It's time. I mean, there is no perfect time. It's divine time. And divine timing is saying, okay, ready or not, here I come. And that's fate. That is, you know, this is something that is part of your destiny, part of fate. And it may require a massive ending or a massive transformation, Gemini. But this is actually leading you towards a very beautiful outcome, which you have the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is the mad tea party, right? This is all about celebrating with your friends, with your family. This is possibly a social event such as maybe a wedding, a reunion, the passing of a test. This could be a new job offer. It could be news of a new birth. It could be a holiday or an engagement of some sort. So when the Three of Cups shows up, this is abundance with your soul tribe. What is better than that, right? So some of you may have even felt like you were part of a triangle or you felt a little bit left out in the past like why does everybody else get to be at this table right at the mad tea party and enjoy all of the fine teas and all of the fine you know beverages and treats and cupcakes and it's almost as if you were on the sidelines waiting for your invitation and that's why we see the wheel of fortune because the wheel of fortune is saying You've been patient, 
You've been putting in the work here, Gemini. We know how far you've come on your journey. And here is the reward. Here is your invitation. So I feel like there could be an invitation here, uh, possibly a love offer. Okay, with that lovers I was seeing in my mind's eye, but we're going to clarify some of the energies here for you. I want to take, first of all, a deep dive into this turning point, this pivotal turning point in your life. Why is the Wheel of Fortune here, please, for Gemini? Why is the Wheel of Fortune here? Oh, wow. Like I said, for some of you, this is the ultimate blessing. This is the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups is family, it's support, it is emotional fulfillment. When the Ten of Cups shows up, this could be marriage, it can be twin flame energy, it can be that happily ever after feeling of not having to go it alone. And I feel for some of you that has been a bit of a fear, right? What if what if I'm not good enough for this job and I'm not able to grow as a, a family dynamic? What if, you know, what if I've been outcast by my family and I'll always be an outcast, right? Or what if I'm not able to take care of the ones I love? I feel like there's just this what if energy that has been very perplexing, that has been a struggle because of some sort of ending or loss. And even if someone has crossed over in the family unit, it's as if their legacy lives on, okay, within you, within the family, within the wind, within the air, right? Within the rivers, the streams, the lakes. I mean, it's all, it's all a part of this journey. And some of you are embracing the energy of gratitude like no other. And there's a sense of fulfillment here with the Wheel of Fortune. And look at what we have. We have the Three of Cups once again. The Three of Cups is celebrating. This could be the news of maybe an engagement, a marriage. It could be a move where you're closer to family. This could be a social you know, gathering or event that family attends. Okay, I, I feel like this is celebratory energy. So you're going to want to get out your cup and fill it up with whatever you're drinking, mocktail, uh, you know, whatever it may be for you and salute because there are cheers and celebrations coming in and it's going to help your family. It's going to help your legacy. It's going to help you in a very profound way. Wow. Ten of cups with the wheel of fortune and three of cups. This is good. I mean, this is more than good. This is the ultimate blessing, Gemini. Congratulations. Let's take a look at that mind of yours. Page of Swords. You're curious. What are we curious about here? You're taking initiative. I feel like you're, you're digging into something, looking into the facts. Ooh, you're putting in the effort. This is you putting in the work with the Eight of Pentacles here. And the Eight of Pentacles is all about mastering a skill. Some of you may be perfectionist which I've recently discovered that each and every one of us are a perfectionist to some degree on the scale, right? I mean, I feel like we have all characteristics, all traits within ourselves. We just choose to act on them on specific ones more than others. But this can be a strong energy of perfectionism or practice making perfect here. This can be gaining knowledge and experimenting as well. Don't be afraid to be experimental when it comes to your craft, to your career, to your relationships. You might want to add a little bit of potion over here, just like she is in her apothecary. She's adding things. She may not know if it's going to bubble over, right? She may not know if it's going to explode in her face, but she's brave enough to try. And that's what the Eight of Pentacles is all about, is being courageous enough to try, mixing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's like the game, the, the, the King's Corner, right? Uh, the card game where, yes, there's a specific set of rules. And I don't mean completely go off and make your own game up, although some of you, maybe you, you have. But I feel like it's important to 
abide by the universal laws, of course, but it's also important to be open to discovery because you could make up a game that's even more fun than the original or more fun than you were taught. Okay. And it's not in like a cheating type of way. It's in a, you know, values, belief system type of way. So it's what aligns with your truth, your integrity, and what brings you, Gemini, emotional fulfillment. Whatever it is, keep practicing, keep putting in that effort, keep putting in that energy because the Eight of Cups says you're going to you're going to love what you do. This is about mastery. So drive yourself, whatever that may mean, drive yourself. I mean, don't push so hard where, you know, you are not loving it anymore, but put enough momentum and drive that you see growth, that you see that there's learning and opportunity for learning. I am also getting here, making sure you're managing your time. Okay, using your time effectively is important here with the initiative. So put the time into what it is that you want to see grow and blossom. And I feel like you're going to be just fine. All right, let's look at, I mean, we, we spent a lot of energy on the values here. So I feel like you get the point with the values, but let's clarify the three of wands as a block. Okay, because we have double three energy coming in. You know what I feel like this is, which we talked about a little bit. This can be hesitation, not knowing, not, not moving forward or hesitating to move forward because you may not have enough information or you may not know how. But don't let that stop you either. Find how, because that's what the Page of Swords is all about. Find it. Everything is figure outable. I think that's a book as well. Everything is figure outable. So if you if you don't know the answer, figure it out. Because we live in an era, an age where we have basically a computer, uh, a computer system at our fingertips at all times. We have access to figuring out how to do anything. Just the other day, I changed a tail light, you know, in my vehicle. And I went on YouTube and, you know, 10 minutes later, that tail light was up and running and it was perfect, right? We can figure out how to do anything. So don't let the lack of knowledge hold you back. And some of you are saying, well, Mel, I'm too old. Like you can't teach a dog new tricks or whatever it may be. Those are just outdated beliefs. And if you are sitting in some sort of outdated beliefs, Gemini, I feel like that's something you want to look into. All right, last but not least, let's see what we're celebrating. I see emotional fulfillment for sure, but let's see what we're celebrating here. Spirit, what do we have? Ooh, an end to anxiety. Some of you are celebrating being able to finally sleep. Okay, so maybe there has been interruptions in sleep, sleep apnea. It could be nightmares. Some of you... It's like, when am I going to wake up from this nightmare? Or when am I going to finally be able to get out of this? You felt very stuck. There may have been a lot of anxiety with the Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords is obsessive thoughts. It can be the monkey mind, right? Worst case scenario, thinking about, you know, this is going to go wrong, that's going to go wrong. It can really be our mind going out of control, but there's... There's an ending. That's why you have the death card here. There's an ending to old ways of thinking that keep you stuck. And that's what you're going to be celebrating. So kudos to you because that's not easy to do, Gemini. And we have the hermit. Remember what I said in the beginning about, you know, maybe you feeling like you've been embarking upon a journey that's felt very maybe lonely at times or you felt like you've isolated some of you even went through a period of your life where you disconnected, possibly from society, from your family, from the world in some way. And there is a really wonderful song. It's actually one of my absolute favorite songs called Society by Eddie Vedder. And you may want to listen to the lyrics for those of you that have felt a little bit alienated. I, it, there's a, a verse in the song that says, Oh gosh, what is it? Um, society, it talks about all the material and earthly things, but would you miss me society if I was gone basically? And it doesn't, it's not necessarily, um, you know, 
dep- I mean, it can be a little bit depressive, but it's not about taking one's life or anything like that. I mean, it depends on your perspective, but I feel like it's just taking a little bit of time out to really reflect, just like the hermit does here. Reflect. I mean, some of you, you did deal with someone who checked out, okay, um, or someone who left the earth plane maybe too early or had caused i mean there this is massive change massive metamorphosis here with the hermit but i feel with your outcome being that ultimate blessing of the ten of cups this is you not feeling alone anymore okay this could be preparing for union this could be connecting to your soul tribe or community it could be you know, being able to open up and enjoy life again. For some of you, you may have suffered from maybe even a near-death experience or, you know, cancer or something that had left you feeling very much isolated, very much alone. But I see that, I mean, because this is what we're celebrating, right? I see you coming out of this hermit energy and rejoining life, rejoining a sense of family, a sense of tribe. And You've gained that much more wisdom because of what you've gone through. Look at the owl there. The owl in the very back represents wisdom. So Gemini, I'm so proud of you here. This is a very deep reading uh, as I feel all these bonus ones are because this eclipse season is bringing about change. Like I said, change, transformation, and metamorphosis. So don't be afraid of change. Embrace it because change is inevitable. That's the thing that is always constant in our lives. Nothing ever stays the same. That includes feelings, that includes emotions, that includes, you know, physicalities and sometimes relationships and all of it. So when we can see it from that perspective and we can be more open to changes that occur in our lives, the easier it will be. Okay, and that's what I have for you. If the reading resonates, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell if you haven't already. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Lots of love.